Hey Simonix, what's up? Welcome to a new tutorial and today we are going to apply Instagram-like photo filters inside our Ionic application. We will use a cool package for this. It will work with capacitors so we can test everything in the browser. On a device there are small issues but we will talk about this later so let's dive into this. I've already started a project and did a few things so let's go through it. First of all initialize a blank project, type angular and also enable directly capacitor. Then the first thing to install is the web photo filter package, which is exactly this package created by Peter Parker. I think that's his nickname. His real name is, as far as I know, David Del Busco. So there are a few things we need to set up and we will go through this. Also, as I said, we will use capacitor so you can run npx cap in it and also run another install command because with capacitor on the browser if you want to use uh, images or capture images um, this will help you to have a little overlay that looks like a camera so then if you want to add the platforms first of all with capacitor always make sure you run the ionic build and then add the platforms that you want to have as always code link below the video so check it out if you want to see it now, the initial uh, the uh, setup for the package looks like this. The steps are described in here and we will start with the script which goes to our index.html. So simply paste it in the head block, close it and move on. Now we need to change these lines inside our angular.json file, no problem, open the angular.json just scroll down a bit to the assets. Um, basically, we're copying from the node modules of the web photo filter two files uh, into the output folder. Um, then we also need to inject the custom elements schema in the module where we are using um, the web photo filter. So in our case, I will use the home module and simply add the schemas custom elements schema and this can be uh, added to our import from angular core so if you're using it in another page of course put it into the module file of the other page and finally one more import which is now needed for um, our oops um, capacitor overlay and that goes to the main ts file and it looks like this a uh, complete copy from the documentation so define custom elements from the package we just installed seconds ago and then that's it to enable the custom overlay within our application so now i can also run ionic surf um, you can also deploy it to a device whatever you want but of course ionic surf will be faster in this case so let's get started with the web photo filter perhaps i will show you a quick demonstration of um, a basic or the basic concept so you simply use the web photo filter you can use an asset so let's try um, i put a random image from the vlog in my assets folder okay filter is selected and then i will hit save and hopefully in a second the view comes up so that's the general idea you uh, pass a source to the web photo filter component and then you select the filter there's also a level that you could set uh, which works for certain filters but for now let's leave this out so now our idea is that we want to make it a bit like instagram so you have this one bigger image and there we see first try to show that it actually works doesn't look really great so far the image is too big but we can see the filter is definitely already working so that's a good sign in your application now we want to have this one bigger image and a preview of all the other possible filters that we can then select which will update the uh, top image so um, I actually already got something in here, uh, of course I will remove this so we can get started one by one. Well, let's uh, leave the import there. So what I did uh, first of all was I created all the filter options and just took this from the example right here. So here's the showcase of the web photo filter with all the possible um, filters and then you can always see the name if you click on view code. 
So I got the name and I got the value to each of our filters. And based on them, uh, I want to now create some slides. And if you know the Instagram application, um, you also know that it's in free mode, so the slides are not locked. So therefore, I created another object for the slide options, um, 3.5 per view, which uh, shows a half or three in full and a half slide. So that gives a nice effect using slides in general. Some space between and offset, and as I said, the free mode, so we can use it just like a scroll view. That's the idea. Um, perhaps for now, we will use the source and not use the image capturing yet. So let's simply call this one image and then also add another value image, which is empty string in the beginning. Um, I will also change this one to any because, uh, well, let's do this later. Okay, let's continue with the slides. So I go ahead with ion slides. The options are what we just defined. So our slide options, thanks for no code completion once again. And let's only show them if we got an image because in the end we will simply have a button at the top to select an image and then uh, everything will be uh, used after we've selected an image. So within the slides, uh, let's get some more space, ion slide ng4 and now we iterate over all the options of our filter options why is there no code completion today filter options that's definitely i don't know why normally there's code completion and also let's keep track of the index so we can easily um, select a filter in the end so on click on this slide, so we will really attach a click event to the slide and therefore also make it tappable. Uh, on click, we wanna filter by the index. So if we are calling the filter functions, we can then select the index from here and apply it to the main uh, window image, whatever. But so far, nothing's happening. Also, I think I accidentally removed our constructor let's add this one again is there actually okay here's my application great um for the image uh when we are setting this and i think i actually removed the path that was a very genius idea so assets social media for developers once again in here now we got an image at least all right now we already got I think slides down here uh, of course they have no content but they should be there because the image is already set so we can continue with the actual slide within the slide we will now use basically the same uh, web photo filter again but we will wrap it inside another element so we will wrap it in this ID pre uh, diff because that was also in the example on the package and then simply use source our image, um, keep, I will show you what this means in a second as well, uh, and the filter, just the filter from our ng4. And also, if you know the Instagram app, you know that there's also always the name for the filter above. So if we refresh our view now, we hopefully see a little slides, which look, um, well, not like they should, but at least we have some <laughs> slides already. Um, that was not the uh, my intention, but anyway. Uh, let's add some CSS for this so it looks better. Uh, within our homepage, uh, let's keep the slides with a bit margin from top. And also with this flex direction, the size for the text, some padding, and also for the selected font. And with that change, I think it's still not looking like we want it, although we uh, already got the names up here. But the size of the photo filter is still too big. And therefore, we can add some more CSS. And now uh, going into our variables, because here we got the root uh, rule, so we can easily put it in here. 
So this is now the full block which targets the preview ID. And in here we can now finally apply some CSS to the web photo filter component. The web photo filter component it, uh, consists of a canvas and the image. Uh, I don't know if we can somehow see this. Um, I think if I say keep true, it will show both the original image and perhaps let's get some more space. Uh, everything is overlaid, I guess. Um, this usually now shows the original image as an image tick and also the, um, come on, um, the filtered image, which is inside a canvas. So you can see it if you inspect one web photo filter component, you can see the canvas is basically, can I just get rid of everything else? Like, uh, I just wanna keep one of them. Uh, okay, now I got only one, but I think I still don't see it. Um, so this is a canvas element, which is with the transformation applied, and an image, which is the real, our uh, original image. If you say keep true, uh, it will always also show the original image, but of course in that place, that's not really mandatory. So we still got a problem with the size and this should fix our image width. That is the first rule. Um, yeah, there we go. Now it's already correctly showing all the possible filters based on our image. The other two filters are now uh, for the um, main view. So above this small preview, as I said in the beginning, we also wanna have a bigger preview. So I will remove this and put this one in here. We will go through it in a second just to show you what the result is now. Okay, no result, that's great. Uh, we do have an image. Uh, uh, mm, why is there no image shown right now? That is kind of strange. So it shows for a second. Um, uh, okay, I guess because image loaded is not yet set. Well, let's do this uh, slowly. Let's just focus on this for a second. So with the class no original, I tried to hide the original image because only for index zero, we want to show the original image. And for all the other indexes bigger than zero, we want to hide the original image. And that's the same we do right here. So if we select a filter, which we will do in our filter function, then we don't want to show the original image anymore. And if the selected filter is the empty string, we will apply the class only original. And that's exactly what we define in here. In one case, if we don't want to show the original, we hide the image. And if we only want to show the original, we hide the canvas element. So that's the whole logic of these few lines here and also the conditional classes applied throughout our code. All right, um, now I think we could get into our filter function because from the view, we're basically uh, done so far, although I still don't know why this is not displayed. And in here, we also see that I use the event when the filter is loaded because um, I will show you why in a second. So. Let's lock this out, load it for now, and let's move on with the filter because right now we're not really using any filter. We don't see the preview for whatever reason, but let's apply our filter first. So within the filter, we simply set a selected filter, uh, which is also empty in the beginning. And also, there we go setting our selected filter to filter options at the index that we selected dot value. And perhaps we also want to keep track of the selected index um, simply because then we can mark the uh, ion text, which is currently active in a different font. So now with the selected filter, we finally see here's the original image. And once I click something else, a few things happening. We call our filter function right here. We set our selected filter now to sepia or blue monotone. 
and the uh, web photo filter component immediately applies this filter. I can also go back to normal and you also see there's a loaded event whenever I select a new filter from here. With this event, we now get access to the actual um, element. And I just wanted to show you that um, with this function, you can easily store a reference, for example, as result um, HTML element, and then set right here our result to e detail result. So you can also expect it, e detail result is basically the element right here, the web photo filter. And if I click on normal, I think it's still the same e detail result, but now it's an image. But still, with this, we got access and can finally, in the end, um, convert it to a base64 string, upload it to our server, to Firebase, whatever you want to do with this image. So the general logic works. Now we only need to add capacitor to the mix. So uh, I think we've already added the select image function here with a button. And now let's bring this in. Simple function to use the camera plugins from capacitor. Um, everything is still the same. And then setting our image to the image data URL. And therefore we can now really get rid of the testing string. So you don't need any more image now. So I click on select image, the image will be set and hopefully everything works magically. I also hope this works with my other webcam attached. So let's see. Um, this is actually a capacitor bug and this is me right in front of the green screen. So there we got the image. And then we see here we got our image and I can immediately apply all the great filters right here. So to show you the final example of how we can use the result, I also added a little uh, button to our toolbar. So let's move up uh, buttons. If we got an image, we want to add a function to save an image. And I actually used some code from Stack Overflow to convert or to download this image file. So let's move to the bottom here. And first of all, the save image is here to get a base64 screen. If we don't have a selected filter, um, we can actually use our image directly because that's the result from capacitor anyway. If we have a selected filter, we need to use the image from the web photo filter, which is a canvas element. You can call to data URL on the canvas to get the base64 representation. And if you want to have some dummy uh, download logic, that's exactly what I got from Stack Overflow. Really um, just a dummy implementation for the browser. So let's finally take one more picture. Uh, camera, yes. There we go. Uh, let's apply a red filter. Let's hit save. And there we go. Test image. Download it. And there we go. A nice filter. It looks a bit different than inside the browser. Not sure why, but I can now also download this for everything else. And this works great within the browser. But now my final note, if you deploy this to a device, I think the app crashes because uh, of memory issues. So when I reduced my array of filter options to just two or three filters, it worked. Everything above did not work. So I think the issue is that we're loading this base64 string into all of these canvas elements. Um, I think, or I think that is my assumption that might be the problem. Um, perhaps you can also give this a try. If it's not working for you in a device, my recommendation is that you use with capacitor, not the data URL, but the real file URL. Perhaps also copy the file that you take from the camera directly into the folder of your application and then use this file link for the web photo filter. Perhaps that might work better on a device or otherwise um, you might have to settle for a different option and don't show a preview of all the 20 uh, photo filters uh, as little images. So 
really not 100% sure if David is watching this video. Perhaps you could also leave a note about this because I know you implemented it in your own application. Uh, maybe I made a mistake, then just let me know. Otherwise, this is really a great photo filter, a great addition if you want to allow your users to edit your images. Afterwards, you could also add cropper.js. I think we also had a quick win on this in the past. Just check it out on my channel and of course, um, I hope that this helps you to build better Ionic apps in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.